Let's talk about monitoring. Monitoring means looking around for pests in the landscape and in the building. You're not just looking for bugs or rodents, you're looking for signs of them and the damage they may be causing, as well as the conditions attracting them. Do this regularly in a planned, systematic way and write down any pests or signs of pests that you may find. Now when I say you, I mean you, and you, and yeah, even you. All school staff should be trained to look for signs of pests. The more eyeballs we have on the problem, the better. And if you see anything, report it to the IPM coordinator. Does your school have a form to write down pest sightings? If not, there's one in the school IPM guidebook on DPR's website. With everyone on the lookout, you can prevent pest infestations and stop them from becoming an expensive problem. So you should first figure out what kind of pests you have. How many are there? How are they getting in? And what are they coming in for? Food? Water? Shelter? All of the above? So how do we look for pests? And what exactly are we looking for? Pests generally try to avoid people. Some are nocturnal and sensitive to light and movement. So you, as a pest hunter, have to look for signs of pests. Big clues may include rat and mouse grease rubbings, mouse droppings, cockroach egg cases, and spider webs. Look in kitchens and food storage areas, under equipment and shelves, along walls, in corners, and near drains. It's hard to see in a lot of these places, but Jim is an experienced pest hunter and he's brought along some of his tools. Jim, what do you have for us? Well, pests like to hide in dark places. So the most important tool you're going to use when you're looking for pests is your flashlight. You're gonna look up, down, around, move things around, see behind them. And sometimes when those areas get a little challenging, I use some additional tools like a telescoping mirror. Sometimes I've even used a fiber optic camera. Another great tool for monitoring for pests is a sticky board. Peel it back and place it in the right location and you can catch a cockroach or another pest on this little tool here. They come in a variety of shapes and sizes for whatever you're after. Once you've got a bug that you can identify, I like to use a magnifying glass to get a good look at it to make sure my ID is correct. And sometimes, I'll even use a USB camera here that I connect to my computer and take a digital photo of it. Sometimes the pests are exotic and you need a little help when you're making that tough ID. Once you know the pest you're up against and how many of them are around, then you know just what to do. So inspect, contain, and ID, nice and simple. Thanks a lot, Jim. You bet. So, you find a cockroach on a sticky trap. Do you hit the panic button? Not necessarily. It's not practical to expect a school to be 100% pest free. So decide what level of each pest is acceptable. This level will vary depending on the pest location. What's an acceptable level for school pests? Well, for example, one rat in the kitchen is too many because of health codes. But five gopher mounds on a hill slope may be fine. Again, it will depend on your school. You may not need to take action every time you see one pest. Okay, got too many pests? Do IPM. Prevent pests from getting in by sealing gaps and entry points. Clean to remove sources of food and water. And remove pests using non-chemical methods like vacuuming or trapping. If these don't work and you need to use a pesticide, try the least hazardous pesticides first. Self-contained bait stations are great for insects or rodents. Rodents, <laughs> that reminds me. Let's go outside and talk to our landscape IPM expert, Phil. Phil, some schools have problems with gophers, ground squirrels, and other tunneling rodents. How do we monitor for them? Well, ground squirrels are active during the day, so generally you're gonna see a lot of animals running around in the field. Gophers are active at night, so you're not going to see the animals, but you are going to see the burrows. Uh, what we're worried about is tripping hazards, we're worried about the dens in the fields. So it's, what's important is that the custodians, the ground crew, the staff take good records and take care of good monitoring. Sounds great. Thanks. You bet. See ya. So did you take notes? With so much going on, you can see why taking notes and keeping good written records are important. You can't rely on memory because you have to keep track of your problems and your progress over the years, especially when staff leave. Besides, if non-chemical methods don't work well enough, you can justify why you use the pesticide. 
So that's monitoring, figuring out what you're up against so that you can make a plan of action. Next, we'll go into battle against ants. <laughs>